Hey, it's your boy, Sergeant Hooked on Heroes. Hit me with another brand spanking new video in this little uh, hashtag Power Month series. Happy 30th anniversary to Power Rangers and to all a more phenomenal month. Uh, if you don't know, August 28th is National Power Rangers Day. This is, of course, the day back in way in night back in 1993 um, when Mighty Morphin Power Rangers first premiered. Um, so they have recognized that as a national holiday. So the fandom has taken hold of August entirely and made it Power Month. Um, it's my little series talking about the most badass moments in Power Rangers, season by season. Um, watching this far, we are now on to one of my actually pretty pretty high on my list favorite seasons, Lightspeed Rescue. Um, this is a really unique season, <coughs> mainly for... For, for, for a few different reasons. One, that it was the first season where it would seem as though the powers are 100% man-made. Somehow, some way, they got a you know connection to the Morphin Grid, but everything else around that seems to be completely man-made. Um, they lean pretty heavily into the rescue and you know administration type, you know governmentally governmentally funded type angle that like Gogo Five did in the Sentai, you know. Um, and for what they do, trying to, trying to talk about Lightspeed as an organization and, you know, how they set up the powers. Um, I also like the juxtaposition against the demons, who are the main bad guys in this, the villain faction being demons, and uh, Colonel Mitchell thinking that the only way to stop them is to create his own team of Power Rangers, you know, designed with weapons that he approves of and he sees fit to actually, like, take them out. I think that's really cool. I like that each member of the team has some kind of a emergency response-esque type skill set. Um, you have, of course, Carter, who is, of course, a firefighter by trade. You have Dana, who is his daughter, who's Colonel Mitchell's daughter, but is a um, EMT or nurse by trade. Uh, you have um, uh, Joel, Joel uh, Green, who is um, a pilot by trade. Uh, Chad, who I believe is a, like, marine specialist and, like, martial artist by trade. Um, and Kelsey, I don't really remember what her thing was other than rock climbing. But anyway, they all have some kind of emergency response type of, uh, um, expertise in some way. <coughs> and I like that angle. It was also unique for being one of the very first seasons to have, um, entirely it not being teenagers' attitude... It's adults with attitude. <laughs> they all seem to be in their like early 20s or a little bit older, um, which was unique for the show because we hadn't really seen that before. Most of the seasons prior had been teenagers or pretty close to. I mean, I guess Lost Galaxy to an extent was, you know, probably not teenagers, like young adults. But it was one of the first where it's like, oh, no, these are just straight nine to five type worker people that also happen to be rangers. Um so it's a really unique season. I really enjoy it a lot, and especially for a lot of different things. And we'll get into that because this is the most badass moments, of course. Um, <coughs> I will say the number one for me has to be the debut and the tenure of the Titanium Ranger. Um, I really enjoy the Titanium Ranger storyline. I enjoy that he is the sister of Dana. He's a son that they never knew, that the rest of the team never even knew Colonel Mitchell had. Dana was kind of, she knew who he was, clearly, but she hadn't seen him in so long, she thought he had died. And his backstory is pretty good, too. Spoilers for the show, but please just definitely watch it. Turn this off, watch it, come back. Um, but essentially, Colonel Mitchell is faced with a decision where he gets into a car accident, essentially. And I don't think Dana's with him at the time. She must be at home or something. And uh, the um, brother, I can't remember his name, I keep blanking on that, is with him. And they're uh, essentially in like a life or death situation. He's approached by one of the demons. That's the main one of the main demons for the show currently. You know, like one of the main villains in the storyline, and says, "I will help you. I will save your son. But in return, you have to kind of give him. My, you know, I have to. I, I get something from you." And Colonel Mitchell just blindly is like, "Yeah, sure, whatever," and just goes with it because he, he's they're like on the edge of like a cliff, about to die, whatever. Some kind of a life and death situation like that. So by doing so, yes. He is saved, as I think maybe Dana's with her, maybe not, whatever. Um, so his life is saved and whoever else, but uh, his son is taken away. And he has no idea where he's at. All of a sudden, he comes back into the picture. And at the time, they are testing out a new power set, the Titanium Ranger powers. Actually, we see in, um, in the beginning of the episode, we see Carter actually trying to use it at first, testing it out and it not working. And eventually, the brother does take the helm and becomes the Titanium Ranger. It was really cool because it was the first American-made, completely and entirely original 
uh, character in, in terms of a sixth ranger. It, it, there wasn't one in Go Go Five. In some of the extra like movies and V cinema type of things at the time for it, there was similar type of ideas, but there wasn't exactly a sixth ranger as there usually is or can be in a season of Sentai. Um, so it was really cool. It was it was a landmark at the time. I was completely stunned to see that there was going to be a um, sixth ranger and that it was going to be the titanium ranger and it was the brother of Dana and all of that. Now. The one kind of drawback with it is because he's original, any footage he has with the team is also original also. So he doesn't have (coughs) nearly as much screen time as I was hoping he would. A few different storylines that kind of take him out of it for a while. Not too dissimilar from what they had to do creatively with uh, JDF playing Tommy Oliver in Dino Thunder when he wanted to go back and have time for his family. Um, But uh, overall, it was really cool. I really enjoy the character. I really enjoy... Um, the power set in general is really cool. Um, I want to get his name real quick because I feel like an idiot not being more prepared for this. Um, Ryan, that's what it is, Ryan. Yep. So, like I said, it was just really cool to see a sixth ranger come together this way and it not have any kind of counterpart from the Sentai at all. I think that's really awesome, really unique, and something I would love to see them try to do again. I mean, kind of we're getting it with Cosmic Fury because it's all new powers and blah, blah, blah. But <clears throat> to see them completely take hold of what worked with the GoGo 5 suits and be able to create their own idea based off of that is really cool. Um, so I really enjoy Ryan as a character, and I really love the Titanium Ranger idea in general. Um, other than that, um, the Lightspeed, uh, was it, is, it, is it the Lightspeed Rescue with Lost Galaxy? Um, time, t- team Up is pretty good. Um, I think to the power of 10 is better, which is the previous team up with uh lost galaxy and in space but i really do enjoy the team ups that we get in this with lightspeed rescue of course um and other than that i do there's a few other episodes of i'm trying to remember some of them but i do really enjoy lightspeed there's a lot of really cool badass moments um and a lot of really awesome awesome things that happen within the season during you know as far as the narrative is concerned um there is really cool sequences I have to do with Carter and Ryan learning to work together better because he kind of doesn't trust Ryan because none of them know who he is. And so he has to learn to work with them. There's a lot of times where they fight together against like the bad guys and stuff like that. Um, and I also really enjoyed Joel's um, blossoming relationship with Miss Fairweather. I think it's really cute. I think it's really unique for a ranger to have a crush on like a mentor figure or like the Billy Tech type advisor role. Um, and that they played with that pretty well. So much so that in the follow-up team up with uh, Time Force, Time for Lightspeed, uh, they're married. <laughs> they're on their honeymoon, actually. So, uh, But Lightspeed Rescue is a lot of fun. It's got some pretty decent characters. I would say, to me, that uh, Carter, Dana, Joel, and Ryan are my favorites. Blue and Yellow, Chad and, and, Ke- and Kelsey just didn't make an impression on me. They don't have a lot of character moments or character-focused episodes. And if they do, they just didn't leave a lasting impression, whereas the others did, in my opinion. Um, a really strong cast of characters. I love Colonel Mitchell. I love Miss Fairweather and all the supporting characters. And just in general, a really fantastic and well-written and well-put-together season. Plus, that theme song is fantastic. Um, but let me know in the comments below, what is your most badass moment in Lightspeed Rescue? Did you guys love the season? Did you hate it? Were you in the middle? Um, i love to see the <coughs> conversations going in the comments. Um... This has been a lot of fun. I really got to say that. It's been a lot of fun doing this series, being able to talk about these seasons, go back, you know, trip down memory lane, as it were, to talk about these seasons in different moments. I definitely have some thoughts going as far as what I'm going to say for next time for Lost Galaxy. Um, And Zordon era, I am ready and raring to go. Absolutely. Um, But I've been so excited and so happy to do this series. I think it's been a lot of fun, really easy and quick to record and be able to put up for you guys a couple of them at a time a day, depending on the day and what I have going on. Um, As far as content this week, I did just put up my Geats review, episode 47, um, so check that out if you have a chance, and also the uh, Most Badass Moments in Ninja Storm, if you guys haven't seen that, that is up as well. Um, Other than that, on Henshin's and Homies podcast this week, on Friday as a recording this video, uh, we will be having Out of Space Reviews, which is an Australian-based Tokertuber, um, and that'll be at a different time at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, it's a little later for us, but but better for them because it's different time zone there. Um... So 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time talking about our uh, topic, which is uh, um, 
I think it's what do we call it? Double build and geets oh my or geets double and build oh, or sorry geets build and double oh my the wonders of double rider gimmicks in general and double rider suits. So it should be pretty fun. They're the 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 Tokutuber we're bringing on is really cool. I've checked out a bunch on their channel. I'll probably try and link them in some of these more recent videos here so you guys can get to know them a little bit. Um, they're huge fans of uh, double. So um, that's why we kind of decided to do the topic that way. And it's just kind of a recurring gimmicky theme in Rider. Um, but thank you so much for the comments, the likes, the shares, subscribing, watching the videos. I thank you guys so much, so, so, so much. Getting pretty awesome traction on these videos. But as always, stay hooked on heroes. I'll talk to you later. And may the power protect you. Happy Power Month. Bye-bye.